Welcome to Earth Science, everybody. Let's talk about eclipses briefly. This won't be a super hard one, pretty quick and easy one. And uh, then we're ready to move on here. As I like to sometimes, let's go back to the state standards, see what they have to say. Most objects in the solar system are in regular and predictable motion. Since, you know, that's why we can study all this, because these orbits are happening over and over and over again. We can predict what goes on. We can understand what goes on. And we can use it to uh, really get down what's going on with eclipses here. That's our goal today. So as a quick review, it's worth mentioning these. I'm, I'm thinking most people got these down pretty well, but hey, why not mention it quick? Why do we have these things? Why do we have a day? What is one day in terms of the Earth, Sun, Moon system? How do we come up with that? Nobody just came up and said, let's make it 24 hours, call it good. It happens because a day is one Earth. And here's where you got to work to keep these things straight. Rotation. Whereas a year... Maybe I'll make these a different color here so they stand out. A year is one Earth revolution. Now, seasons we haven't done yet. That's going to be our last thing within this Earth Sun Moon system, uh, little units. And it really does come down to an Earth revolution, and also some of us know about that tilt thing. Let's leave it, though, so we haven't done it yet. No big deal. Why do we have moon phases? Why do we have eclipses? Why do we have tides? All three of those are all linked in with the moon's revolution. I won't say it's exactly one, but one cycle of phases will be one revolution plus those extra 2.2 .2 days. The eclipses, we'll figure out what goes on here. And tides, you know what? Tides, we should really throw in one more. Tides are not only the moon's revolution going around us, but then we got to add in that with the moon's gravity, also we have a earth rotation as the earth has to spin through those tidal bulges each day so what's next let's practice one more time and i know you've done a lot of them what the moon phases should look like so in other words if you're here on earth looking at that one what would the view from earth look like in that case what i'll have you do this is one of the easier ones i'm going to do for you and i want you to do the rest i'll be checking on your notes from Earth, what does the moon look like? Well, over here, it's totally dark. So we'll use a thicker pen and color it in totally dark. From here, what's it look like? From here, what's it look like? Go through all of those, if you would, please. I'm making sure that we got these down before we move on. And if you would like to do that, like cross off the back thing. Remember, you can't see the back of the moon anyway, so get rid of it. You don't have a spaceship to go back and look at it. And that might make it easier. And you can flop your Chromebook down and you can look and you can see what you should be looking at here. Hint, a little bit of light on the right, mostly dark on the left. Practice those one more time because it's going to, I mean, it's going to definitely come up, but it also is going to deal, uh, that idea is going to pop back, sorry, pop back up again with eclipses. We get eclipses when the sun, earth, and moon align. When they all line up in a straight line. So if you look at the above diagram, it kind of feels like, I mean, if the sun's over here, they show the sun's rays. You don't need to draw it if you don't want, but it's way over here. These are not to scale at all. If they're all in alignment and that gives us an eclipse, it kind of feels like with the moon going around about once a month that we should get about two eclipses per, per month. There should be one here and one here. We don't. And that's one of the things we got to figure out. And, and that's really it. Again, today's thing's going to be pretty simple. Let's go down and say at the very end of this paper, what do I need to know? You got to know the position of the sun, earth, and moon during each eclipse. It's not too hard. And then, therefore, the moon phases. But if you already know your moon phases, you already know that. And then we have to know why we don't have eclipses every two eclipses every month. And we're good. This stuff doesn't get too tough on the regions. It's also not super common on the regions. I'm less stressed about this than I am about continuing to practice moon phases, which the regions loves. Uh, so, what are they? Each eclipse is named for the thing that quote-unquote disappears. The thing that if you're standing there watching, you suddenly won't be able to see for a little bit until it's over. So, the blank disappears during a solar eclipse, sun, and the blank disappears during a lunar eclipse, that's the moon. All right, so let's look at the two. And this one, sun is here, earth is here, and what happens is that the moon falls into the shadow cast by the earth. So, the moon... You'll see it, you'll see it, you'll see it. It falls into that shadow, it disappears, and then it comes back out of that shadow and it reappears. 
These are called lunar eclipses because the moon falls into the shadow cast by the sun. Using your head in a minute, I'm going to make you think about what moon phase. I don't want to say it here because I want you to come up with that. Um, and yeah, that's what you'll have to do. Not too bad. During a, in this one, what we've got is the earth is here, the sun is here, and the moon will fall right in between the two. So the sun is up, and then it like disappears because the moon gets in its way, and it and then when the moon moves on, the sun reappears. These are much more rare. These happen a lot more. These have, are a lot less. These also will affect, you can pretty much from the whole dark side of the earth, you'll be able to see it. These, the full eclipse is only in one tiny little, it ends up being a path. Um, so they're, they happen less often and they happen to a smaller area. During a solar eclipse, the earth has a shadow cast on it by the moon, falling, getting in the way of the sun. And that's really it. I mean, if you, get, if you can kind of picture how they work, there's not a ton to memorize here because we've been working these all so much. And all you got to do is say like, okay, from Earth, if the sun disappears, the moon's in the way. Or on Earth, if the moon disappears, it's because the Earth's shadow is blocking that light. And you'll have it. The questions are almost always diagrams. They're really not too bad. And of course, me being me, you're going to get a classwork here where you'll see about a ton of them. So I want you to do this on your own. I'm not going to answer these on the notes. So if you've been not listening right now, listen, do those by yourself. Ooh, and I threw in a tide question too for extra trickiness and fun. So lastly, why do we not see eclipses twice a month? Um, it's because our piece of paper, granted our computer screen, has a limitation as a model. If I throw this at you, it makes it seem like eclipse, 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 eclipse. But there's a limit to this and it's that it's two dimensional. Here's a piece of paper and it has no depth. Really here in the solar system, it's three dimensional. So things don't always line up perfectly. The moon's orbit, as it turns out, is tilted relative to the plane that the earth occupies as it revolves around the sun. That's, that's a chewy sentence, I know, but check out this diagram. In this situation over here, since the moon's orbit is tilted, it's oftentimes going to be up above or down below where it would need to be for everything to line up. Now, what this diagram does, and again, are the limitations of a two-dimensional piece of paper is has it like come out of the piece of paper, and now we, they're all three are in alignment, even though that part of the moon's orbit may be above, part of the moon's orbit may be below. If there's that moment, which should happen twice a year, where it's possibly lined up. It's called the line of nodes where it would line up. Then you need the once out of what the one position out of the 27.3 day revolution of the moon. It could be either in between on one side or in between on the other. So twice a year. And then on those twice a year, you also need the two days out of the 27.3 for them to line up. So it's rare, not, not impossible, not like you'll never have it in a lifetime, but reasonably rare. All the other days, the moon should be, is usually above or below the plane that the Earth orbits. So, it's a, again, like all of the stuff has been a little bit tricky to picture, but really, honestly, the region's questions on this tend to be very easy. If it's like, why do we not have eclipses? Moon's orbit is tilted. Grab your writing utensil right here. This will really get you out of the trouble all the time. That. The questions tend to just lean on that as like a little short snippet. They won't make you like draw a diagram and line all these things up and think about the line of nodes. That's a term you'll never see. Moon's orbit is tilted. Therefore, it's usually not in between or right behind the sun and the earth. All right. We'll practice some questions. You guys can do it. They're not too bad. Then all we're left with is seasons and we're ready for the tests. Thanks for tuning in and listening. Good luck, folks.